Philadelphia. Tony Curtis is here. Henry. See, you don't have to say anything else. I'd know you any place. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be I here. I just want to give everybody in England time to rush in from the kitchen where into the lounge because people say, come quick, 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 quick. Look, yeah. it's Tony Curtis on the television. Well, thank you. How many movies did you say you'd made? Sorry, we were talking. Yeah, about 130. I don't know. I, I can't understand that. I'm only 22. Again. How did I get to? Yeah, again. <laughs> 130 movies in 38, 39 years. Would that be a lot compared with other actors? Yes, I think so. Um, <laughs> I've got to tell you a story. Uh, when I first got to Hollywood, yeah. I was 22, and I rented a house with a swimming pool. That's no mean trick, especially when the only pool I had was my bathtub when I lived in Manhattan. And um, it uh, wasn't heated, but I loved it because it was a swimming pool. And I was at the studio one day, and I... Uh, came back to this uh, house I rented, and I put on my bathing suit, and I dove into this chilling pool. I got out of the pool, dried myself, I went into a, a little room, put on my clothing, walked out, and here I am sitting with you. What happened to those 37 years in between, I'll never know. That's how quick time goes when you're having a good time. <laughs> well, weren't all good times, I mean... You, well, you... no, there weren't, no. There's been a lot of hard, uh, hard knocks as well as good times. Well, you see, from my point of view, I don't believe, really, if, if I um, had two movies that I was allowed to watch again and again and again and again, it would be a dead heat between Casablanca and Some Like It Hot. No, I don't you. believe Some Like It Hot. Do you, do you watch it ever? Oh, yes, I do. Just Do you laugh at I it? I love that movie. But, you know, I love every movie I made, you know, because... Good for you. But, because there I am. I mean, it's not somebody else. Yeah. I, I, that some uh, cartoonist from Disney didn't paint me in. I mean, that's me. Yeah. And, you know, that's my life. People don't quite understand it, or maybe they do. Uh, you know, the actor gives up his time. It took eight, ten weeks for every movie I ever made, and I had to show up. I couldn't call on the phone and say, listen, I'm not coming in today. Get somebody else to paint me in. <laughs> phone it in, yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's my life. Uh, acting on the screen, I don't act, and I don't pretend I be. Hamlet said it. You know, in the speech yeah. to the players, they say that's the speech to actors. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you trippingly on the tongue. I don't believe that. That speech isn't the advice to actors. It's the soliloquy of Hamlet's, to be or not to be. To be or not to be. That is the question. How very interesting. Because if you be, then you don't have to act. Yeah. I don't act in movies. I be. Yeah. I put on the clothes. Then I don't have to memorize lines. I, you know, it automatically becomes part of uh, the, the fabric of what you're doing. And uh, uh, that's my method, or I won't say method, but that's my madness sure. in doing my kind of work. And so, uh, it's a reality. I can't say on the set when I get a beautiful woman in my arms and they say, kiss her, and I kiss her, and they say, well, let's you know, make believe. Maybe to them it's make believe, but to me it's not. <laughs> I mean, I can feel her, you yeah, know? Sure. And when you, when you confront someone with an anger or with love or with happiness, or, or you've got a gun in your hand, or you've got to do a fight scene, uh, that's a physical action, and physical action is reality. So you see, making movies is reality. Uh, therefore, in 130 some odd movies, I've lived countless different people. Yeah. You know, I, I am really a privileged man. At, uh, at 60 years of age, I've lived the life of maybe somebody 190 years. But in fairness to old Shakespeare and that particular speech, I mean, he does at the end of it say, what's Hecuba to him or he to Hecuba yeah. that he should weep like yeah. this, right? Exactly. Okay. Well, isn't that a good, isn't that a good phrase to say? Mm. Yes, why should he carry on about Sylvia? He hardly knows Sylvia. Yeah. But you know, uh, Shakespeare is a great inspiration to me. You know, uh, we Americans uh, never really have the you know, it's not our fabric, you know, it's, it's sure. uh, my, my, my English well, it's, cousin. Well, it's, it's a step fabric, like a well, step song. Absolutely, yeah. and you know, I, I, I think it's uh, uh, every actor, not even actor, I think people who, are, uh, who have to do with other people, people that work at airplane counters, you know, mm. we all have to give of ourselves. We're all different, aren't we? Absolutely. You know, we're different to our mothers, our fathers, to our girlfriends, boyfriends. When we're alone, we're different to ourselves. In the closet, we're even different... It's in those very private and special moments when we're alone that we really confront who we are. I think That's if you've got a lot of guts. Yeah. I, think it's been, I think it's called being a great actor, sir. 
Well, maybe that's it. Maybe one day when I grow up, I'll be that. Oh, don't grow up. No, that's terrible. No, I won't grow up. Thanks. It's Thanks right, for yes, telling me yes. that. Now, look, Tony, yes. you're in London um, because uh, Parsifal, yes. uh, where is Parsifal, uh, the movie which uh, opened this week. We have a little clip from it. Um, let's have a look at it there, chaps, if we can, um, because it's, um, it's Tony Curtis in his latest movie role, which I haven't seen, and I'm looking forward to it. Tony, my final offer. <laughs> you devil. Tony Curtis said, as the, as the dove came up, he said, ah, that's my fourth wife. <laughs> well, this, it's difficult to get yes. um, a flavour of the movie. Yes. Um, it, it, you it's, know, it's a bit of an abstract film, abstra abstract in the sense that you saw it said, um, uh, try, uh, something your fate, uh, Master try your fate, try love, yes. Uh, uh, originally, Eric Estrada has a company called Levitt, which is a food, and it says, master your fat, lose weight. So it's been convoluted, so it says nice. that. And it's a machine that's invented that can skywrite all over the world. It's not unlike the, uh, the concert that's being given today. Yes. You know, where everybody yes. in the world is going to kind of try to get together and, sure. and overcome uh, the and inequities. One, of one guy has, uh, the bad guy has the machine and the good guy wants it, is that yes, it? Yes, right. Yes, and Orson Welles, as you saw, he plays, uh, <laughs> yes. uh, what was, what's his name, uh, Shanker, of all yes. things. <laughs> he plays the gypsy, uh, Prince Shanker the 19th or 92nd. But you see, we had a wonderful cast yeah. in the film. Um, uh, Cassandra, who, who plays my wife, uh, also wrote the uh, screenplay. Yeah. And uh, Orson Welles was in it, and Eric Estrada, Don Pleasance, Ron Moody, and uh, dear oh, sweet Peter Lawford, God and bless his soul. Yes. You know, he died just a little while ago. Now, you were very close to Peter Lawford, yes. weren't well, you, Well, Peter Tony? and I knew each other for a long time. Um, I had a very severe drug problem uh, uh, a year ago, two years ago, uh, alcohol and uh, drugs. Yeah. And it was devastating me, and I felt terrible about it, you know, because I thought it was a lack of character, lack of willpower. But it was through my research that I found that it is a disease, mm. not unlike diabetes or yeah. cancer. I mean, you wouldn't say to someone who had cancer, you're a cancer doper. I mean, you know, and you shouldn't mm. say that to an alcoholic. You know, every one of us, including your good self, there isn't anyone in the studio that doesn't have a direct or indirect relationship to someone who has this addiction. Absolutely right. And, you know, Absolutely it's something right. that all of us must, sure. all of sure. us must, you know, uh, kind of um, get together and try to solve that. So, but it's inevitable because it's something that is available to man in his well, community. Well, not only and that, but it's our, it's our human condition. Yeah. It's a human condition, that addictive uh, compulsiveness. And it was through Peter that I was introduced to a, um, a clinic. And... Uh, Really, I, 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 I can thank him for, yeah. for saving my life in a way. Do you know, are you familiar with the plays of Samuel Beckett? Yes. Have you ever played in them? No, I haven't. You should. Yes. Thank you. Do you know that? You yes, should, because you, know, you, you have know, that, Be Beckett all this a... awkward philosophy. Yes, right. But I find, don't you find that a, a good way to learn things, to put the emphasis on a different syllable? You know, everything is so kind of, <laughs> s you know, set. It's nice to find a... A kind of a, for an example, if, yeah. if I may, I don't want to yeah, digress, but I love this idea. I never travel anywhere. It travels to me. When I'm in Los Angeles and <clears throat> I'm going to uh, go to London or London is going to come to me, I uh, pick up two little bags and I sit in a car. I don't go anywhere. The car goes somewhere. <laughs> yes. Then it lets me out and it puts me on a, on, a, on a street that walks. I don't even have to walk. You get on it and it just moves you along. Then I get inside of a big door, strap inside, the doors open, and there's Los Angeles. They close the door, when they open it, there's London. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I don't have to go anywhere. It's all said to me. And with a theory like that, you shouldn't just act in Beckett plays. I think you could write some of them. Yes, right. Tony, it is wonderful to meet you, and oh, thank, thank you very you. much. You're going to stay with us and be back later. We'll take a break now, and I think we're over Rusty's very soon.